What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and I kinda, I've been wanting to do this piece for a while now. Um, it's one of those things where we get the really common reoccurring re uh, reoccurring question in our, in our videos when we do builds, or we talk about personal rigs, or new workstations, test rigs, all that sort of stuff, and it's Jay, if blah 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 company is so good, why are you using yada yada? Like, so basically, let's, let's use Ryzen as an example. Jay, if Ryzen's so good, why did you use Intel? So today we're gonna talk about some of the rationale about how we choose the parts, the things we choose to use long-term versus just testing, and to sort of shed some light on how we come to the conclusions we do in these reviews, which is why we feel confident giving you the recommendations that we do. Today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a mobile RPG done right. You probably heard about Raid everywhere, but that's because Raid is one of the top three ranked RPGs on the Google Play Store and was just nominated as a finalist for Google Play's Best of 2019 User's Choice Award. Raid is an epic dark fantasy turn-based game with over 400 champions to collect and customize. Champions like orcs, undead, knights, elves, and more, and you can assemble a team from 16 heroic factions and explore over 1 million champion builds. And all of this is free to play. Multi-battle mode sets battles to run in auto mode while you do something else allowing you to spend less time grinding and more time developing your teams while fighting the fun stuff. With huge plans for upgrades over the next six months, there is an infinite amount of content to enjoy. So what are you waiting for? Click my link in the description below and you'll get 50,000 silver as well as a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. So good luck and we'll see you there. Also to side note, um, if you hear any loud bangs and stuff, it is really windy right now in SoCal and they're still building like uh, offices next door. So we just have to move forward and deal with it. Uh, so I already kind of said, like a perfect example, when I built this system right here specifically, this is the Dark Knight rig, which I still have to swap out the motherboard on because I do want to use this rig for some stuff. This has our 3900X, it's got the 5700XT from MSI that's water-cooled with the Corsair blocks, a uh, full Corsair loop and all that. And one of the most common comments that we see is, if Ryzen's so good then, why are you still using Intel? And then it turns into, oh, well, that's because YouTubers are shills and Intel pays more. And Okay, so I can tell you first and foremost, Intel has absolutely positively never paid money for us to do a review, a build, blah, blah, blah. The, I, guess, I guess the funny irony of all of that is AMD is the only brand that's ever paid us money to build a system. You're looking at it. That was one of them, right? So this was a sponsored build. It was sponsored by AMD and it was sponsored by Corsair. And there's nothing wrong with that because this is not an opinion piece. This was a, this was a build for the sake of showing you like really cool custom stuff and that's fine. So it's obvious why we built this one. But it, it's, it's, a, it's a valid question to ask a reviewer. And I, and I really don't consider myself a reviewer if you wanna know the truth. I consider myself a guy that gets to play with this stuff and to, tell you about my experience with it. In my opinion, a reviewer gives you a defi definitive yes or no. This is good or bad. And that's not what I try and do. I'm not, a, I'm not, that's like a movie critic, right? This movie sucks. Don't see it. Two farts down. I don't know, however they rate their movies, right? <laughs> so it's like, that's not my goal around here first and foremost. So I'm not speaking obviously for other YouTubers or tech tubers or influencers or shills or whoever you want to refer to us as. That's not what I do, okay? But it's a valid question because when a lot of us go, oh my God, this is destroying the competition. The 3950X, which we haven't done our video about that yet, but the 3950X is just trouncing the 9980XE and things like games and stuff like that. It's just, oh my God, it's so good. Let's look at my personal rig Nebula featuring my 9980XE. So it's kind of like, what the hell, man? That's like double speak. You're talking about how good it is, but then you won't use it. So there's a few different scenarios that we sort of work with here. And that is, like I said, we, at least when I say we, I'm referring to like Phil and I now, because we're definitely a duo here. We are a dynamic duo. You, you can't see Phil, he's too short, he's under the table. It's all about experiencing as many things as possible. Funny, a fun fact here with Nebula, this is the first time in a personal rig of mine that I've ever used graphics cards that are not referenced, that are not just the basic, plain Jane, whatever Nvidia designed, and then the cheapest you know, version of it from an AIB, that, that's, that's been used. This is the first time I've ever used custom cards, that, you know, custom PCBs, custom power delivery, and all of that. Because although I've used them in plenty of builds and I've used them in, in stuff, one of, the, one of the reasons why I never used them in the past was because custom card water blocks weren't really a thing. Like back in the 700 series is where it kind of started becoming a normal thing, but back when I had like my 8800 uh, Ultra, the GTX Ultra, there was like no aftermarket blocks whatsoever for any custom cards that might have existed. But as the AIB start building more and more SKUs and then variants and, and 
PCB sizes and this and this and that. The water block companies, whether it be EK, Bits Power, Bike Ski, or Big Ski, however it's pronounced, you know, Fantex, everyone that's involved with it now, Alpha Cool, they've got to know that the R&D they're going to spend to make the block, build it, and then sell it, is going to exceed the cost to make it. Otherwise, what's the point in doing it? That's, you can't stay in business at a loss. So that's all kind of changed now. Now you can get blocks for custom cards, so I'm finally using it like that personally. Um, but when it comes to CPUs and stuff, when it comes to personal rigs, I don't need the fastest, I don't need the most necessarily stable. I'm an overclocker, so I like to play around with overclocks and stuff like that. So like Skunkworks has blue screened on me quite a bit as over the years, it sort of degraded a little bit and I have to adjust voltages and adjust frequencies and memory timings and all that sort of, and I'm okay with that because that's the fun for me, that's, that's the fun. But I'm at, I, when I'm at home, I'm not trying to build a business off it anymore. We've got our workstation rigs here for that. So that's why when it comes to our workstation rigs, we need the utmost of reliability. We need the utmost stability when it comes to drivers and BIOS and stuff like that. And for the longest time, that's what you got with Intel. When it came to Intel, the boards were better manufactured. The quality of the components were better. It's not just about how well the CPU performed. It was the motherboard uh, R&D that was put into it. The quality of the capacitors, the quality of the chokes, just the quality of the PCB, the overall durability of day-to-day -day use. What do you mean day-to-day -day use? You're not taking it out and hammering on it. No, but every time you fire it up and it gets hot and traces are being used and electricity is going through it, there's wear and tear that happens down at a PCB level. And there are things that wear out. As a perfect example, actually, the Threadripper build that we did with the 3970X for Phil to use as his new editing rig, and we'll get onto that in a second, um, has not been shut off since we built it. Well, since we moved it. I had to unplug it and turn it off to move it in there. But uh, he's been running 24 seven because he uses uh, remote access to access files, or if he's at home and asks one question, he can remote in and, and do it himself and, and take a look at the system. In fact, I think I seen him do it from his phone, which is pretty cool. So it's one of those things where stability, reliability, and durability are just at the utmost importance for that particular use case. So that's why the fact that we moved to Threadripper for his system is unprecedented because of the fact that we, when he first started working for me, he was working off of his laptop and then we built him a rig, which was the 1920X uh, Threadripper system, which gave us all sorts of instability problems. He was spending as much time in the BIOS trying to get things to work or run or boot than he was actually editing. And it was starting to impact the amount of productivity we could get done because of the time he was spending working through those bugs. That was first gen Threadripper. That was a brand new platform and that was before I feel like the manufacturers of motherboards and stuff really started spending the time to really iron out the motherboards because of the fact that it wasn't proven yet how successful Ryzen and Threadripper were gonna be. Fast forward now two more years, we've seen now with third generation Ryzen, um, which is Ryzen 2, where Zen 2 is third generation for 3000 series for both Threadripper and mainstream, it's been proven now. It's a success. It performs well, it's way more stable than it's ever been. So we made the choice to go ahead and switch to it. My, per my personal work rig in there, if that even makes sense, um, that's running on an Intel right now. That's a 7960X, it's overclocked. It's not stable at all because it's got, I'm one of those guys that every time I change the hardware, I just threw my hard drive back in and let it like reconfigure devices and just go. It is borked beyond borked. I came in one day and it was just reset like back to square one and I lost a lot of crap. Remember when you tried to watch a YouTube video and it was just spinning triangles? Oh yeah, I tried to watch a YouTube video and it was just like polygon triangles all over the screen and I was like... With a 2080. Yeah, with a 2080 in it. In fact, I still couldn't watch videos and stuff and then one day I came in and it worked. So I, I don't know. That's the kind of stuff you can't have on a professional workstation uh, because again, durability and, and reliability. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because of seeing how well it's worked for Phil now, cause you guys know we're in the middle of that whole, we switched back to AMD and I said, we're gonna give you long-term report on how that's been. A little teaser, it's been pretty damn good. Um, the only issues we seem to have encountered are specific to Adobe. And that's where it's really hard to figure out like what's Adobe and what's AMD and, and all that. We're pretty sure it's hundred percent Adobe, but it's been great. Phil is just loving the amount of horsepower it has, which made me go, you know what? Maybe I'll go ahead and do the same. Maybe I'll take my 3960X that I have, which is less cores, but again, this would just be for fun for me because I'm not using it in the same capacity that he is and switching over to it and getting off of a, an older Intel platform right now that's giving me problems. 
Software problems, not hardware, but problems nonetheless. But you know, it, it's not even just about the, like, the actual platform brand itself, like Intel or AMD or Nvidia. It actually, we get a lot of comments too about Jay, if you love EVGA so much, which I've been accused of being EVGA shale a million times. I love the brand EGA. <laughs> the irony. I'm keeping that in. <laughs> the irony. I love the brand EVGA. It's a brand that I have been purchasing from since 2001. I mentioned an 8800, a GTX 8800 Ultra that I had earlier. That was like the, the, the best graphics card I'd ever owned for the longest time. And so it's one of those things where like, when you, when you are just a fanboy of a brand, we're all fanboys of something, whether you want to admit it or not, we all have our fanboyisms. Um, EVGA is a brand that I've been a huge fanboy over for years. So getting the opportunity to work with them is just kind of like, oh my God, I've made it. This is so awesome. I know the people at EVGA and it's like, you know, it's one of those things where it's, it's like, okay, I, I really like the products, but I can't only use EVGA. So it's one of those things like where right now on our, on our test rig over there, I have a Maximus Extreme. Um, actually not this one, this, is, this one's actually in here. I have a Maximus Formula on there, which I've used with our 8700K for the longest time. But I'm getting ready to upgrade that to a 9900K using this Z390 Dark, because I got a chance to use this motherboard finally in another build I did for a friend. And I'm just like, yep. Yep, I'm an EGA fan, EVGA fanboy. Oh, EG really wow. But even though I'm a huge EVGA fan, I said it right, right? Yeah, okay. It. <laughs> uh, it doesn't mean I, uh, I, I can only use them. So that's why my personal rig this time around, I went from an EVGA X299 um, for the win K to an Asus Rampage Omega. So it's kind of like I'm constantly sort of moving things around and getting experience and testing and, and, and whatnot because the only way I can give you any sort of long-term like long advice or like, hey, I've experienced this or that or this revision is by using all of that stuff. But that's why we're upgrading from an 8700K to an EVGA Z390 Dark with a 9900K because it is the fastest gaming CPU on the market today. Yeah, but gee, it's only faster by like 3%. Okay, you know, the end user, the average consumer is probably not gonna notice that. And then you can go and run that with a Ryzen 3950X or a 3900 or whatever. But the thing is, when we're trying to alleviate 100% of our bottlenecks to try and give us the maximum GPU scores and stuff when we're doing these, these reviews and these A, B testings, um, we have to alleviate all of those bottlenecks where possible. That's why we run ridiculously fast memory and ridiculously fast CPUs when it comes to like core clock and all that sort of stuff because it's the only way we can tell you how fast this guy is without this guy getting in the way. Which brings up a whole nother conversation too of like, Jay, most people don't have that kind of hardware so you should be running lower end hardware to give a more realistic review. Yeah, but then I'm doing that in spite of the people that have the high end hardware and then it's not gonna give them a realistic idea of what's happening. It's the same reason why we test in an open test bench because if I wanna see how good a cooler is, I need to take away the variable of the chassis maybe sucking. There's always gonna be people that wanna question the way you do things, but anyway, that's the reason why we do that. But even all the way down to something as simple as water cooling. Jay, you're the water cooling guy. I thought you, Jay, I thought you liked EK. Why'd you use Corsair? The same reasons I just mentioned. Phil, turn and look at this shelf right here. We've got your EKs and your Alpha Cools and your Mayhems and your Corsairs and your Fantex. We got your Bits Powers, no Bixki yet, but I wanna get some of that because apparently that's really good and a lot less expensive. But I have never used it, so I can't tell you that. So I gotta put it on the shelf, the shelf of all the stuff that apparently we're big hoarders of. That way I can give you the long-term reviews. Now I can tell you right now, like I said, I can't speak for all the other reviewers out there, but I can tell you I have speaked to the other reviewers out there and I haven't had anyone tell me anything any different than what I've just explained. But you know, obviously you've got to take it from their mouth, not mine, because I'm not a spokesperson for them. So I just sort of, sort of wanted to do this particular video kind of, I don't want to say clearing the air. I think people already know I think most people already know kind of how we do this, but I just wanted to make a video sort of explaining it that way. Anytime someone is like on Twitter, like, Jay, why did you use a blah, 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 instead of a blah, 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 I'll just link this video. That's it. it just gives me a, a single point to be like, go, you know, just serving it. We're just serving this video everywhere. It's also why on the end of some of these videos, I go, what hardware do you think we should look at? What hardware do you think we should, you know, try out next? Because there's so many options out there and we buy a lot of this stuff too. Um, it's hard for us to figure out like where the Venn diagram overlaps are so that we can try and hit that, you know, that where the meat of most people kind of live when it comes to how they think when they shop. Because one thing that is definitely true and, and, and any tech YouTuber that tells you otherwise is a liar. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Linus or Steve or anyone. And if they say otherwise, then I'm calling them out as a liar. 
getting all this stuff for free for so long does change the way you think a little bit, especially when you go out and you start shopping. I mean, even if you're spending your own money, I think totally different today than I did eight, nine, 10 years ago when I was going to Micro Center or Be not, never Best Buy, but PC Club, dating myself there, PC Club, on what I would buy and the, and the reasons I would justify buying certain things. I think we all shop a tier or two higher than we used to um, just because I think a lot of our ideas of what real end user use cases are like are a little bit skewed. Um, but anyway, I'm sure some of those guys are gonna wanna challenge me and I'll have some mad tweets now, but that's okay. I don't really look at Twitter that much more anyway. I just thought, like I said, I wanna make this video kind of explaining some of this. So we give you firsthand experience. That's why I said I won't talk about things if I haven't tested it, I haven't used it personally. And I'm not gonna just regurgitate and show someone like, well, I don't know, here's what so-and-so said about it because that's hearsay and I don't, I don't do that. So if you guys have any hardware that you think we should take a look at, make sure you comment down below because actually, no, I wanna do a, a 2020, like January 2020 bottom freaking dollar. Like we went out and recycled aluminum to build this computer because we needed every penny possible. So if you guys have any suggestions on like, I'm kind of thinking the new Athlon, but that still uses DDR4, but you can't buy anything new that still uses DDR3. I don't know. If you guys have any suggestions on how we should do that, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for listening to this rant. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.